Welcome back to this Unreal Engine tutorial series. In the last video, we started by creating this simple level so that we could get a feel for how our character is going to perform. However, we don't have a character. So in this video, we're going to start by creating our character. There are a few extra steps we need to take before we get there. So we'll get right to it. The very first thing we want to do is create said character. If we click on the blueprints folder here and right click in there, we get the option to create a basic asset. We're going to create a blueprint class. These are the classes that I spoke about before, the actor, pawn and character. You can get more details by hovering over them. We're going to create a character class. We're going to name it B underscore base character and hit enter. Once that's done, we're going to double click on him. If it's opened in a new window, as opposed to a new tab in the engine, you can click and drag that tab to your preferences. So the first thing we're greeted with is the viewport. Anything we put in this viewport will be represented in the real world for us to see, such as the character itself or a weapon. This is also where we'll put our camera in relation to our actor. In this case, it's a first person camera, so it's going to be attached pretty close to the head. If we wanted to create such elements, they would be called components. And those components would be added up here. Here we can see a capsule component. If we walk into a wall, we won't be able to walk through that wall because this capsule will be stopping us. Here we have an arrow to show us which way is forward and a mesh. This isn't a static mesh though. This is particularly a skeletal mesh, which you can see either by hovering over it or as you may have noticed, clicking on either of these components opens up their details on the right. And the last component, the character movement. This is the really cool work that Epic Games has done to save us, brand new developers, a huge headache in trying to get our characters off the ground. They've added options for walking, jumping and falling, swimming and flying, which is really cool that we don't have to do that all from scratch. You can see over here, there are these tabs. The construction script next to the viewport is something I'm going to explain in a later video. But where we want to be right now is the event graph. It's all good and well to put this character in our world, but we want to be able to control it. So that's where the event graph comes in. The event graph, as you can imagine, contains events. Events are triggered when anything changes in our world. If our character jumps, that is an event. If we pull the trigger on a gun, that is an event. You can see here, there's an event for when we begin playing. So as soon as the level is created, or as soon as this character is created in that level, this event will fire. To demonstrate that, we're going to put this character in our world. To do that, we're going to need to tell our game to pick this character to put in the world. So we're going to go back over to our level and we're going to come back to the blueprints folder and right click and create another blueprint class. But this time we're going to select game mode base. This is a completely different class. Game modes are like referees. They sit above the world, making sure that everything in this level abides by its rules. So a game mode is where we would put something like a score if we were playing a multiplayer game. The game mode also tells our level which character to start with. And that's why we need to create it here. We're going to call this one GM for game mode and then underscore tutorial. And then we're going to double click on our game mode and it's going to open a similar window. 
Now our game mode is not a visual element in our game, so we don't need to do anything in the viewport whatsoever. All we need to do right now is scroll over to the right where it says classes. This is where we tell our game or our level what it needs to spawn. So if we go over to a default pawn class, remembering that our character is technically a pawn under the hood. If we click on default pawn, we can see scrolling down, there's our base character. If you click on the base character and then hit compile and save, we're all done there. Now compiling and saving is extremely important. Anything you do in any blueprint will need to be compiled and saved before you can test it in your game. Obviously, saving is self-explanatory, but compiling will also tell you if there are errors in anything you've done, if there's a problem, if there's some sort of illogical set of code or something just doesn't make sense and it will otherwise cause the game to crash. So now we've told our character that he is the one to be spawned and the game mode will be the one to do it. Let's exit out of the game mode. The one last thing we're going to do before we hit play is drag in a player start. If you can't see the player start, click on the basic tab and drag and drop. This is only meant to tell our game where our character is going to start. So we're going to click on the X axis make that zero. The Y axis is zero because we're going to start right in the middle and height will be often determined by the height of our actual player. So if I type in zero here then he's going to start stuck in the world and collision will likely tell it to ignore that and we'll start falling. So a safe number, let's do 125. Once we've got our player start in, the next thing we're going to do is tell our level which game mode to use. To do this, scroll up to the top in this settings menu and click on world settings, which will open a second tab here. If you ever accidentally close this tab, this is also where you can reopen it from. In game mode override, we're going to select GM underscore tutorial and now when we hit play, by default, we won't be controlling our character. We need to click on the level itself to take control. Once our mouse disappears, you'll see the sh shift plus F1 for mouse cursor prompt in the top left, telling us that's how we can get back our mouse cursor. But now you'll notice that if all's working well, you can't move. And that's because we haven't set up any of our movement script. Pressing escape will pull us out of our level and we can get started on that movement. Double click on base character. If we haven't added any script, then we're greeted with this page, which is great for more simpler blueprints because we don't have to go through all those tabs just to get to one setting. However, we are going to be putting some script in here. Open full blueprint editor. And here we're going to discuss in detail how events are going to work. So as you can see here, our event begin play gets us started as soon as the level spawns. As an example, we're going to use a print string to test this. Print strings are great for testing anything in your game. You can plug anything into this value and it will convert to a string. For example, I mentioned booleans in the first video, or floats, or integers, or most of those values. They can be converted to a string, which is another version of a text variable, and you can see what value that is. Right here, it's just going to say hello as soon as it's called. So I'm going to drag on the event begin play execution node, which is that arrow you can see here, and I'm going to plug it in to the print string. Now when this character spawns, it will fire a print string. Hit compile and save, back over to our test level, 
hit play, and you can see in the top left corner where it said click for mouse control that we saw hello for just a moment. That was our print string firing. I'm going to change the time on that print string so we can see properly. If we click the drop down menu, we can change the duration to 10 seconds. And again, even though that was such a small change, we're still going to need to compile and save before we test that again. Hit play, and now it will stay there for 10 seconds. So we know that our character is being spawned successfully into the world. Pressing escape to exit our level. Now, we will discuss how we're going to control this character.